The Trouble with Tribbles is the 15th episode of the second season of the American science fiction television series Star Trek. Written by David Gerald and directed by Joseph Pevney, it was first broadcast on December 29, 1967. In the episode, the Starship Enterprise arrives at Deep Space Station K7 and is conscripted to guard a consignment of grain from sabotage, the Klingons being of concern. Lieutenant Uhura is given a Tribble which leads to dramatic consequences. The Trouble with Tribbles was intended to have a third season follow-up episode, but it was not completed. The follow-up episode was developed for Star Trek, the animated series as, "...more Tribbles, more Troubles". Gerald explained that the episode was almost unchanged from the original premise. To celebrate the 30th anniversary of Star Trek in 1996, the Star Trek – Deep Space Nine episode, "'Trials and Tribulations' used digital techniques to insert the Deep Space Nine actors into the events of "'The Trouble with Tribbles'." Gerald appeared on screen as an extra, and the episode was nominated for three Emmy Awards and also for the Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation. Topic. Plot The Enterprise is summoned to Deep Space Station K-7 by a «Priority One» distress call, used only in case of disaster. On arrival, Captain James T. Kirk William Shatner is infuriated to learn that there has been no disaster. The distress call was ordered by Nils Barrys William Shallot, the Federation Under Secretary of Agricultural Affairs, who only wants guards for his shipments of quadrotritical grain bound for Sherman's planet. The grain is crucial for the Federation's plan to develop the planet and claim it under the terms of the Organion Peace Treaty. Starfleet Command shares Barry's concerns and orders Kirk to cooperate. As the Enterprise crew enjoy shore leave on the station, interstellar trader Serrano Jones Stanley Adams arrives with goods for sale, among them purring balls of fluff called tribbles. He gives one to Lieutenant Uhura Nichelle Nichols, who brings it on board the Enterprise, where it quickly begins to reproduce. The human crew adore the animals and Uhura gives the offspring away. A Klingon ship arrives under the command of Captain Colleth William Campbell, who invokes his right under the Organion Treaty to shore leave for his crew. The Tribbles, multiplying rapidly on the station, disgust the Klingons, and the feeling is mutual. Korax, a Klingon, insults the Enterprise crew led by Scotty and Chekhov and a fight breaks out. Barrys, for his part, is terrified of possible Klingon interference with the Grain Project, and suspects Jones of being a Klingon agent. Dr. Leonard McCoy DeForest Kelly and Mr. Spock Leonard Nimoy are concerned that the increasing number of Tribbles threaten to consume all the food aboard the Enterprise. When it is discovered that they are entering ship systems through air vents, Kirk realizes that they could be a threat to the grain aboard the station. He is too late, however, when he opens an overhead storage compartment, he is literally buried in grain-gorged tribbles. Spock and McCoy discover that many of the tribbles in the hold are dead or dying, suggesting another problem with the grain. Barry's vows to see Kirk punished for the fiasco, and Colleth demands an apology from Kirk for what he considers disrespectful treatment of his crew. Their arguments are cut short, however, when Barry's assistant Arne Darwin Charlie Brill walks into the room and the triples react as if in the presence of a Klingon. McCoy reveals Darwin to be a surgically altered Klingon. Darwin confesses to having contaminated the grain with what McCoy explains is a virus that interferes with an organism's ability to digest food, eventually killing it. 
After Darwin's exposure and arrest, Serrano Jones is ordered to remove the Tribbles from the station a task that Spock estimates will take 17.9 years, or he may face charges for transporting dangerous life forms. Just before the Klingons depart, all the Tribbles aboard the Enterprise are transported onto the Klingon vessel by Chief Engineer Scott, where, in his words, they'll be no Tribble at all. Topic Production Topic Writing The episode was the first professional work of writer David Gerald, and went through a variety of drafts before it reached the screen. Because his typewriter used a less common, smaller size font, an approved version needed to be reduced by 20 pages before filming. Nichelle Nichols remarked that she had, "...never seen a script go through so many changes... and stay so much the same." Gerald had been a fan of science fiction since he was a child. When Star Trek was first broadcast, he was concerned that it might turn into something similar to Lost in Space, which he described as, "...one full-color hour of trash reaching into millions of homes." His first story outline was sent into Star Trek after his agent suggested that he waited until the show started to air under the theory that the show might drop an existing episode in favor of a better script. The story was entitled, "'Tomorrow Was Yesterday'", not to be confused with, "'Tomorrow Is Yesterday'", and was about the Enterprise coming across a generation ship which had descended into a two-tier class system. His agent received a rejection letter from producer Jean L. Kuhn dated October 3, 1966. The letter stated that the outline was by no means inadequate. It is, as a matter of fact, very adequate." It went on to say that it would require a budget larger than that available to television, but would have made a good film treatment. Kuhn offered to meet with Gerald and explain what they were looking for, because they were not purchasing scripts at that time. Kuhn suggested that Gerald should wait until the following February to see if the show was renewed for a second season. They also discussed several story ideas, including some small furry creatures that bred too quickly. Kuhn thought it was a cute idea but would be too expensive as they'd have to build each creature. In preparation for the second series submission, by January, Gerald had put together five premises to pitch. He had his best hopes on two treatments called, Bandy, and The Protracted Man, but decided to submit his fifth story despite Kuhn's earlier dismissal of the idea. It was called, The Fuzzies. The idea was based on the introduction of rabbits in Australia in 1859, who reproduced at a vastly increased rate owing to the lack of predators. The initial premise placed the story on a space station to avoid the ecological damage that the creatures would have on a planet. However, Gerald's agent was concerned that requiring a miniature of the station to be built as well as the additional sets would cause it to be too expensive for a single episode. Because of his agent's comments, Gerald modified the pitch to place the action on a colony planet instead. This pitch included the plot points such as the creatures getting into a poisoned grain storage, but omitted the Klingons, and Serrano Jones was called Serrano Smith. The five pitches were submitted by Gerald's agent in February 1967, and received a response in June. At the time the show had already purchased too many scripts for the second season, but story editor D.C. Fontana suggested that they should purchase the story and assign it to a staff writer as it was better than some of the other stories they already had. At the time that Kuhn got in touch, Gerald had just been employed at CBS as a typist working on scripts such as the pilot of Hawaii 5 -0. As soon as he got the response, he quit the job. 
Gerald and Kuhn met once more, and revealed that the network had recently made a request for more episodes based on other planets. Kuhn told Gerald to work up a further pitch. This version of the story added the Klingons, and moved the action from planetside to a space station. During a visit to the set, Gerald had the opportunity to speak to Leonard Nimoy and ask his advice on how to write for Spock and was allowed to watch the dailies from each day's shoot of the episode, The Doomsday Machine, which was being filmed at the time. This version of the story was entitled, A Fuzzy Thing Happened to Me, which was purchased by Kuhn as a plot outline. He offered Gerald a chance to write the script himself, by promising not to hand it to another writer for a month. However, Kuhn made it clear that he was not offering Gerald a script assignment, but was giving him the option of submitting a draft. Gerald turned around the first draft script in two and a half days. Both Kuhn and associate producer Robert Justman gave feedback on the script, and pointed out a few gaps such as there needing to be some way in the plot for the crew to discover that Darwin was a Klingon agent. The following draft had Serrano Jones discover that Darwin was an agent, which Kuhn thought was not «punchy» enough. It was then rewritten so that the Fuzzies were allergic to Klingons. Both Gerald and Kuhn thought the idea was trite, shtick, hokey, and had been done before, but Kuhn agreed that it was the direction the story should go. The rewrite of the script took a further week. On a further visit to the set, Gerald was called into Kuhn's office. He was informed that he needed to change the name of the Fuzzies, as the legal department was concerned about similarities in the name with H. Beam Piper's 1962 novel Little Fuzzy. He subsequently came up with a variety of alternative names. Through a process of elimination, he ended up with the name, Tribble. Gerald's submitted script was within the standard page count for an episode, but, when it was retyped for distribution by the production's Mimeo department, it ballooned from 60 to 80 pages due to Gerald's having used a typewriter with 12 pitch rather than the 10 characters per inch pica standard of the TV and film industry. This meant that some 20 pages needed to be cut from the script. Scenes which were cut from the script included the Enterprise chasing after Jones in his vessel, and resulted in the scene where Kirk has triples tumbling onto him while in the grain locker. Gerald felt that this enforced editing process tightened up the story and made for a better series of gags. Nichelle Nichols said to Gerald, I've never seen a script go through so many changes, and stay so much the same." Kuhn's participation in terms of suggestions and edits was such that Gerald thought he should have been given a co-writing credit. The producers liked the resulting script so much that Gerald was later tasked with rewriting the script for I, Mud but did not take any credit on the final script as he did not want to take the credit from Stephen Candle, the creator of Harry Mudd, Gerald worked on I, Mudd, before The Trouble with Tribbles began to film. He was surprised one morning when he was handed a copy of the Tribbles script and told to sign it for Robert A. Heinlein. The Kellum de Forest script clearance and research firm had cautioned that the tribbles in the episode resembled the Martian flat cats in Heinlein's 1952 novel The Rolling Stones, and suggested that the rights to the novel should be purchased. Gerald became concerned that he had inadvertently plagiarized the novel which he had read 15 years before. Kuhn phoned Heinlein, who, according to Gerald, only asked for a signed copy of the script and later sent a note to Gerald after the show aired to thank him for the script. Heinlein's own recollections were at odds with this account. In his authorized biography, Heinlein said he was called by Jean Kuhn about the issue and agreed to waive claim to the similarity 
to his flat cats because he'd just been through one plagiarism lawsuit and did not wish to embroil himself in another. He had misgivings upon seeing the actual script but let it go, an action he later regretted. If that matter had simply been dropped after that one episode was filmed, I would have chalked it up Riley to experience. But the nice kid did not drop it. Triples, i.e., my flat cats, have been exploited endlessly. Well, that's one that did learn me today. If J. Christ phoned me on some matter of business, I would simply tell him, see my agent. The fictional Quadrotriticale's real-world antecedent, the grain triticale, was a fairly new invention at the time of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Filming The use of live animals to represent the tribbles was immediately ruled out. According to Gerald's account, the inspiration for the form of the Tribble instead came from a fluffy keyring owned by Holly Sherman. Sherman's planet in this episode was subsequently named after her. The design came from Hua Chang, but they were individually sewn by Jacqueline Cumier. She was paid $350 to sew 500 Tribbles from synthetic fur and stuff them with foam rubber. Six ambulatory tribbles were made using the mechanisms of walking toy dogs, which were quite noisy and required the dialogue to be looped in during editing. Other tribbles were created by Jim Rugg out of bean bags for when it was required for one to sit on a person or object, and the breathing tribbles were hollow with surgical balloons inserted. Some of these tribbles were later displayed at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. in 1992. The sale at Christie's Auction House in 2006 included tribbles from this episode as part of a larger Star Trek sale. Because of the synthetic fur technology of the 1960s, relatively few original triples exist as of 2010 because the fur fell out over time and they went bald. An original triple was sold at auction in 2003 for $1,000. Filming began during the second week of August 1967. Three temporary sets and a portion of Corridor were constructed for specific use in this episode, which included the large trading post set. The chairs in that set were a problem, as the set designers wanted 24 matching chairs and decided that folding ones would not do. John M. Dwyer sourced them from a local company, but the numbers required meant that they had to be pulled out of showrooms from all over the county. When it came to the fight scene in the episode, Dwyer warned director Joseph Pevney not to damage the chairs. That scene was filmed twice after a cameraman with a handheld camera wandered onto the set. The scene where Kirk is covered with triples in the grain container needed to be filmed eight times, using all 500 sewn triples. Gerald had expected that scene to be cut at some point during production, as he thought that William Shatner would not agree to it. He said that Shatner was the "...consummate professional and I believe he was eager to show off his comic abilities." Pevney was pleased with the outcome of the shoot, calling the episode, "...a delightful show from beginning to end." In addition to directing, Pevney also sourced some of the parts to create the Tribbles and was directly responsible for the casting of Stanley Adams. He had pushed for the episode to be made as he recalled that there was some resistance at the time against making a comedy-style episode. These types of episodes were unusual for the series, as only, "...the trouble with Tribbles," and "...a piece of the action." were considered to be comedic episodes from season two. Pevney was one of the two most prolific original series directors alongside Mark Daniels, and directed 14 episodes of the show. The cast responded favorably to the script. Nichelle Nichols was particularly pleased as it allowed Uhura to be a woman and took her off the bridge. It was one of her largest roles in any single episode in the series.
Topic: <laughs> Casting. William Campbell had previously appeared in the first season episode The Squire of Gothos as Trelane in The Trouble with Tribbles. He portrayed the Klingon Captain Colleth. At various points Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry claimed it was his intention to bring back Colleth during the third season of the original series, as Kirk's recurring Klingon adversary. Some internal production documents contradict this story. Although Colleth returned in Star Trek, the animated series, Campbell did not voice the role. He returned to the role in 1994 for an episode of Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, entitled, Blood Oath. At the time of casting, William Shallot had just finished filming the ABC sitcom The Patty Duke Show. He described himself not as a fan, and had not read any science fiction since 1948. He thought that the role of Nils Barrys was just another guest spot, and the role of a rather stuffy bureaucrat was not the most appealing character." He did not remember the character's name, only recalling it when he first attended a Star Trek convention at a hotel near Los Angeles Airport, as the fans called it out when he entered the lobby. He was later cast in the role of the Bajoran musician Varani in the DS9 episode, Sanctuary. Whit Bissell, who played the station manager, Lurry, was better known at the time in the main cast role of Lieutenant Jen. Haywood Kirk in the ABC science fiction television series The Time Tunnel. Michael Pataki, who portrayed the Klingon Korax, went on to play Karnas in Star Trek, the Next Generation first season episode, Too Short a Season. Charlie Brill portrayed the Klingon agent Arne Darwin. Brill has previously been a sketch comedy artist with his wife Mitzi McCall, and had appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show when the Beatles made their first appearance. Reception While initial fan reaction to the episode was mixed, it was more popular with the general public. Critical response to the episode was positive, and it was nominated for the Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation which instead went to fellow Star Trek episode, The City on the Edge of Forever. It has since been included in several, Best of episode lists and features, including as part of the Best of DVD collection alongside three other episodes. It has also been released as part of the Season 2 DVD box set. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcast The Trouble with Tribbles was first broadcast in the United States on December 29, 1967 on NBC. The initial fan reaction was undecided, but the episode connected better with the mass market. This effect was later explained in 2012 when Jordan Hoffman on StarTrek.com described the trouble with Tribbles as quite possibly, the first episode of Star Trek you ever saw." It entered popular culture and remained well known to the public outside of the Star Trek community. Retrospective critiques The New York Times described the scene with Kirk and the Tribbles in the grain container as one of the Best Remembered Moments of the series. Time magazine ranked The Trouble with Tribbles as the sixth best moment in Star Trek. IGN ranked it as the fifth best episode of the original series, while Tech Republic ranked it as the fourth best. The AV Club included The Trouble with Tribbles. In a list of 10 must-see episodes, and USA Today listed as one of the three best. In 1998, The Trouble with Tribbles 
was listed as the eighth best cult moment of all time by the Times newspaper. In a list of the top 100 episodes of the Star Trek franchise, The Trouble with Tribbles was placed sixth by Charlie Jane Anders at io9, Zach Handlin's July 2009 review for the AV. Club gave the episode a grade of A. Serrano Jones was Handlin's least favorite part of the episode, and with the exception of that character, it was one of the better scripts seen in the original series. He thought that despite the lack of a sense of real danger, the plot all comes together neatly and praised the story's effects on Kirk, saying, "...the way the episode unfolds means Kirk's constantly dealing with things he does not really want to deal with, and there's a surprising amount of enjoyment to be had in seeing him complain about it to Spock." Michelle Erica Green, writing for Trenation in March 2006, said she thought that the episode would have dated, but found it was, "...as funny as ever." She thought that Scotty's lines were, "...unforgettable," and the scenes between McCoy and Spock were, "...priceless." Eugene Myers and Tori Atkinson reviewed the episode for Tor.com in April 2010. They described it as, Easily the most celebrated episode of the entire original series, if not the whole franchise. They went on to describe it as a perfect episode, and both gave it maximum scores of six out of six. Jamal Epsikokanat, Jammer's Reviews, said that the team behind Star Trek were at the top of their game with this episode. He gave it a score of 4 out of 4, saying that, "...Tribbles is perhaps the best, most enjoyable comic piece the franchise has ever put out." In 2009, Time magazine rated, "...The Trouble with Tribbles," as one of the top ten moments of Star Trek, including television and film up to that time. In 2017, Space.com ranked, "...The Trouble with Tribbles." The second best episode of all Star Trek television, including all Star Trek series television episodes prior to Star Trek Discovery, in 2016, Newsweek ranked The Trouble with Tribbles as one of the best episodes of the original series. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Awards The episode was nominated for Best Dramatic Presentation at the 1968 Hugo Awards. All of the nominees that year were episodes of Star Trek, with the award instead going to The City on the Edge of Forever. From the number of votes, The Trouble with Tribbles was placed second. Topic: <laughs> Home Media Release. The Trouble with Tribbles was one of the first episodes to receive an official release by Paramount Home Entertainment. In 1980, it was released on VHS on a two episode tape alongside Let That Be Your Last Battlefield. It was re released towards in 1991 as part of the first full season release on VHS. This was re-released in 1993, and was released on Laserdisc. In 1998, a «Talking Tribble Gift Set» was released which contained both «The Trouble with Tribbles and «Trials and Tribulations» on VHS. The first DVD release was in 2000, when all of the original series episodes were released in individual releases of two episodes per disc. The first season set that the episode was included in was as part of the season 2 DVD set released in the United States on November 2, 2004. In 2009, it was included in a best of collection with three other episodes of the original series alongside A Mock Time, quote, comma, quote, The City on the Edge of Forever, and Balance of Terror. Quote dot. 
The remastered DVD sets were also relaunched to coincide with the release of the film, Star Trek. The Blu-ray release included the UN change scenes as alternative angles. Disc 5 of each set contained only the Trouble with Tribbles from the original series but otherwise contained triple related extras. These included both More Tribbles, More Troubles, and Trials and Tribulations. Topic Legacy Topic More Tribbles, More Troubles The Trouble with Tribbles was originally intended to have a follow-up episode during season three, but after Gene Roddenberry stepped back from the production of the show after a time slot change and further cuts in the budget, the idea was scrapped. In 1973, Gerald had become friends with DC Fontana from their time spent on the Star Trek convention circuit together. He had heard about Star Trek, the animated series, and offered to do an episode. Fontana responded that she wanted the triple episode that was cut from season three. This episode was entitled, More Tribbles, More Troubles. The episode introduces the natural predator of the Tribbles and genetically engineered Tribbles which no longer reproduce but instead grow much larger. As with his other animated series episode, Bem, he later explained that almost nothing was cut from the original pictures for the third season of the original series as animation played out quicker and so everything still fit into the episode despite the reduced running time. Both of Gerald's animated series episodes were novelized by Alan Dean Foster, and Gerald later said that he thought that he did a fine job. Topic. Trials and Tribulations To celebrate the 30th anniversary of Star Trek in 1996, producers of both Star Trek, Voyager and Star Trek, Deep Space Nine decided to incorporate elements of the original series into episodes. The Voyager episode, Flashback showed events on board the Excelsior under Captain Hikaru Sulu during the period in which Kirk and McCoy were imprisoned in Rura Penthi in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. However, the Deep Space Nine homage used the original footage from 19 scenes in The Trouble with Tribbles and other episodes in order to digitally insert the actors into the events of the episode, entitled Trials and Tribulations. The episode was nominated for three Emmy Awards, and as with the original episode, the Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation. As the 30th anniversary approached, Gerald had heard rumors of a triple sequel in the works but had only heard denials from executive producer Rick Berman. Following an interview request from the New York Times, he telephoned Berman once more to ask what was happening as he did not want to say he did not know about the sequel episode and embarrass anyone if it actually was going to happen. Gerald suggested that an acknowledgement of the creator of the Tribbles might be in order and asked if he could be an extra. He was cast as a security redshirt. While Gerald was on set, he also advised director Jonathan West on the integration of new scenes into The Trouble with Tribbles. Gerald later said that, Trials and Tribulations turned out beautiful. I think it was the best episode of Deep Space Nine ever and possibly the best episode of Star Trek after the original series. Charlie Brill returned as Arne Darwin to film new scenes set in the DS9 timeframe. Erroneous claims 
On the 2016 home video release The Roddenberry Vault, in a commentary track for the episode Gerald states of the episode, "...this was the first time the word pregnant was used on TV." This is false. While the very first use of the word on American television is not known, the word was spoken at least five years earlier in, "...never name a duck." The first episode of the second season of The Dick Van Dyke Show in September 1962. 1 <inaudible> <inaudible> Further appearances and parodies Tribbles have been further seen in other Star Trek episodes and films, including Star Trek III, The Search for Spock and the J.J. Abrams-helmed films Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness While on a visit to the set of Star Trek, Gerald was told by Abrams that the Tribble had been deliberately «snuck in» to the scene. It appears in the scene where Kirk Chris Pine and Spock Prime Leonard Nimoy meet Scott Simon Pegg on the Vulcan moon. The Trouble with Tribbles was also reimagined in that timeline's comic book series by IDW Publishing and entitled The Truth About Tribbles. In 2003, Tribbles appeared in the Star Trek Enterprise episode The Breach. In that episode, Dr. Phlox John Billingsley uses them as food for his medicinal pets in Sick Bay. Gerald has been in discussions with the fan created series Star Trek New Voyages to bring back the Tribbles for a further original series era episode. Both his original series pitch, The Protracted Man. And his Star Trek, the Next Generation script Blood and Fire have been turned into episodes of New Voyages. Tribbles have been parodied in a variety of other television shows and types of media. Futurama featured a parody in the second season entitled, The Problem with Poplars, which included several Star Trek jokes. These include a reference to Roddenberry's and features Zap Brannigan, whom the Futurama staff have said is intended to be a parody of Captain Kirk. In the 2003 video game Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, the player's ship becomes infested with a frog like species called Gizka, prompting the player to receive the quest, The Trouble with Gizka, in order to remove the pests. Merchandising and adaptations Gerald published a book describing his experiences in the creation of The Trouble with Tribbles. Entitled The Trouble with Tribbles, the birth, sale and final production of one episode, it was published in 1973. The book was well received by the former cast and crew of Star Trek and was used as a textbook for teaching screen writing. A variety of Tribble replicas have been made over the years, with the most recent licensed product coming from QMX, released in 2013. A plate to commemorate the episode was the first to be launched as part of an eight plate Star Trek, the commemorative collection in 1986. It featured an image of Kirk with the Tribbles in the grain compartment created by artist Susie Morton. The first original series expansion for the Star Trek customizable card game was launched in 2000. It was entitled, The Trouble with Tribbles, and was based on this episode and the associated episode of Deep Space Nine. It also introduced the Tribbles game, which used only Tribble related cards. In 2010, two movie posters for The Trouble with Tribbles, featuring Uhura and Spock being slowly covered in Tribbles, were created by Justin Ishmael for the art boutique attached to the Alamo Drafthouse Cinema in Austin, Texas. It was a follow up to earlier posters created for the episode Space Seed. Juan Ortiz later created a 1960s retro-style poster for each of the 80 episodes of Star Trek. The "'Trouble with Tribbles' 
Poster made it appear that the warp nacelles of the Enterprise were sprouting tribbles which then bred rapidly as the ship flew on, creating a cloud of them behind the ship. <laughs> Footnotes Bibliography <inaudible> 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 Topic External Links The Trouble with Tribbles at Star Trek.com The Trouble with Tribbles on IMDB The Trouble with Tribbles at Memory Alpha, a Star Trek Wiki The Trouble with Tribbles at TV.com The Trouble with Tribbles 2006 remastered side-by-side -side comparisons at trekmovie.com